Hello, welcome everyone and thank you for attending to what is going to be an insightful information sharing and presentation. Firstly, to ensure the best experience for everyone, we've gone ahead and muted and disabled the camera on all participants. Uh, this will help us avoid any background noise that might disrupt the presentation and to ensure a smooth quality bandwidth throughout the session. Our Ken will be moderating the webinar and assist anyone that's having technical issues. So today's format is we intend to keep the webinar within the hour. The presentation itself will take about 40 to 45 minutes, leaving the remaining time for Q&A. So we do encourage to ask questions. Put your questions in the comments section, uh, which is on the right hand panel. Um, and I'm sure your questions will also benefit other participants that have joined the webinar today. So let's get started. I hope you've got yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea and enjoy the presentation. So before I hand it over to the trial team, I just wanted to touch on two important things. I know most of you are using a sophisticated and modern ERP system. You have invested time and money because you value the whole concept around digitalization, automation, efficiency, real-time reporting, and ensuring your business can keep up with the ever-changing technological landscape and business trends. So in today's modern landscape, we have the opportunity to move away from manual processing and transition towards a more streamlined and automated approach. So this is where trial steps in, right? Secondly, in the area of accounts payable, applying greater diligence to protect your business from online scammers is becoming paramount. And not thinking that what you hear will never happen to you. You know, if I give you a simple analogy, think about the steps and measures you take in protecting your home and family by locking your windows and doors every night because you want to eliminate any risk of being a victim of a home invasion. And for many of us, we go that extra step in installing security cameras to either deter criminals or use the evidence if something does happen. The same types of steps need to be taken in our business to eliminate this risk of what's happening today with online scammers attacking our businesses. When a business is scammed, it's normally enough to significantly set them back or even cripple them. And unfortunately, when you report these incidents to the authorities, the funds are long gone and, and the criminals itself, they operate overseas. They exhibit a remarkable combination of creativity and elusiveness in their actions. So whether you've been scammed, say $50,000 or half a million, that's still small fries to the authorities that are trying to combat how corporate companies or government agencies that are getting scammed in the millions. And most times small businesses incidents go unreported because they're embarrassed that it's happened to them. Your business is effectively online, right? Steps and processes need to be taken to verify accounts and invoices before payments are released. This is where trial comes in. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Mark and Schrader to tell you all about it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Shadi. And of course, just some quick introductions. I'll introduce myself and then Schrader herself. Um, so look, uh, I've been at trial for uh, a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, some of those things that Shadi's mentioning there, you know, sort of resonates with uh, the things I've done in my background. Um, Probably the largest uh, thing or relevance to, to this particular session today is the year spent at MYOB and, and working with the um, uh, the SME and enterprise customers and just knowing, you know, how hard it is to build cash flow and grow a business and how hard, you know, the those sort of companies work to, to build themselves up. Uh, and so then to see, you know, what can happen, um, you know, with a simple innocuous payment fraud, you know, that's where you know, I've felt some synergy in coming across. So um, as it says on the slide there, I am coming to you from uh, Denver, USA at the moment. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're doing a few exciting things over here, um, sort of expanding this uh, offering that we're going to take you through today uh, to a more global audience, because uh, it is something that isn't just a, an Australian problem, it, it is sort of worldwide. Hi, everybody. My name is Shrada. I have recently joined the guys at Trailed, um, so a few, few months into my tenure now. 
Um, and off that's off the back of almost 20 years, didn't quite make it to the 20 year anniversary, but uh, almost 20 years at NYAB. So very much in the ERP space um, and also very much within the ecosystem of ISVs and partners as well. So I'm um, really stoked to be joining the team at Trailed and uh, look forward to doing the product overview with you guys today. Back over to you, Mark. Yeah, great. So we'll jump into it. And before Shraddha sh jumps in and shows you uh, Trailed specifically and how it uh, hooks into different ERPs, I just want to take a moment to tell you a quick story about how, I guess, the origin story of Trailed because it was actually developed out of uh, a real world problem for a real world business. Uh, so Adam Late, one of our co-founders, uh, his family business, business was uh, severely impacted by business email compromise. Uh, and they unfortunately had to learn the hard way that uh, processing such a large volume of invoices with manual entry and review uh, just wasn't sufficient or sustainable. Um, one of the things you sort of talk about is that you think about your personal credit card. That's actually protected by the banks with always on AI security that's flagging suspicious transactions when they come through. Uh, but when it comes to business payments, the only line of defense seems to be that manual review process, um, which, which kind of seems ludicrous when you think about the amount of money going through the economy through accounts payable versus uh, consumer, consumer spending. Uh, and so anyway, on to Mount Barker Chicken, uh, hopefully a known uh, brand to uh, a lot of you coming if you're coming in from WA. Uh, they obviously supply co uh, chicken to Coles and Woolies, that sort of thing. Now, they had hundreds, if not thousands of invoices coming in each week. And they, of course, had a dedicated AP clerk because their process was manual. Now, the reason for a manual process seemed sound. They actually wanted to slow down the process, make sure that everyone was diligent and make sure that there wasn't any unnecessary leakage through lazy approvals or error. But for the finance team, here's how each day went. The stack of invoices would come in, the clerk would sort through them, check against a purchase order, if there even was one, and make sure that there was a purchase receipt. Some of them match, some of them need approval, and some are completely off and need to go back to the supplier. They would then get those invoices, collate them together, forward on to the appropriate divisional heads and marking the important ones as urgent. Then they had to follow up on last week's invoices. Find that despite clear requests, most hadn't been actioned, so they would send out reminders. Then they would notice how many pay on time discounts had been missed. But job not done. Onto the approved invoices, these still need to get in the system. So grab them one by one, start punching them in, hoping to do it accurately, but quickly, but accurately. Tag up the supplier, make sure the payment details haven't changed, make sure the payment terms are your payment terms and not the supplier's requested terms. Connect the purchase order, upload a copy of the invoice. All done so quickly, now you worry you haven't done it accurately. So send it to a team member to sense check. Finally, ready to make a payment? Prepare a payment file, spot check a payment file, authorise double signature in the bank, get it paid, hopefully before late fees kick in. Which is an absolute pain of a process. Now, if this sort of sounds like an exaggeration, a recent AP Now survey actually found that 71% of businesses are either having problems with slow uh, invoice approvals or issues with their purchase order matching and are staggering more than half of all businesses are still actually entering their invoices manually. Now, the straw that broke the camel's back for Adam and in the family business was when they unknowingly paid a $50,000 invoice uh, that was compromised on its way into the business. In the overwhelm of that manual process, things got missed, checks dropped off, and their process actually started to work against them. Now, by the time they had realised this error, the funds had been transferred overseas multiple times, and as much as Shadi alluded to before, the money just wasn't coming back. Now, again, as Shadi sort of alluded to, the stats, we've actually got some of them for you here now, and they're actually quite eye-watering. And, and while companies like Coles, Google, and Facebook, who have all had incidences, they can absorb the loss, for smaller companies, it's not that simple. In Australia alone, the cost of uh, invoice fraud and business email compromise was an estimated 896 million, and only one in seven businesses actually even reported the incident. With the amount, average amount stolen being well over $100,000, the impact, it is significant. Now, as I mentioned, the banks are known for always stopping and reimbursing even the smallest amounts of fraud on uh, your credit cards. But when it comes to those business payments, the cost sits solely with you and your business. It's understandable. Many businesses try to protect themselves through manual review and approvals, but this is slow, time intensive, and where mistakes get made and missed. 
with more and more of these incidents occurring, we actually believe that it pays to be proactive in uh, identifying these risks well before making a payment. Uh, and Estrada will take you through now. Uh, we believe that Trailed can really help manage that balance between getting some efficiency and time savings with your accounts payable process, but also upping the level of security that you have. Over to you, Strata. Thank you, Mark. So I'm going to take you through the Trailed solution and what it looks like end to end. So the first role I'll be playing is that of the accounts clerk um, and getting the supplier invoices into the trailed in tray. The screen that you're looking at now is essentially the trailed in tray. Um, and the second role after that I'll be playing is the role of the approver. So once the accounts clerk has done the um, the invoice extraction, then the role of the approver to approve those invoices. Um, all the whole way through that process, talking about that fraud protection and where it starts kicking in within Trailed and what sort of stuff we're looking at um, to make sure that we can secure your business payments. Um, and then finally, getting the data into your ERP. Um, we are fully integrated um, with a number of ERPs, and so just making sure that's a seamless experience for you and there's no double um, double handling of data. So first and foremost, the role um, of the accounts clerk. So like I mentioned, this is the trailed in tray. Um, and the first step in the process is getting the invoices onto this screen. Now there's a number of different ways of doing that. Uh, the most popular way by far is um, to do a simple email forward function. So the moment that your supplier invoices hit your inbox, uh, we set you up with a trailed inbox and you simply forward them to that address. Uh, or we can automate that forwarding process for you. Uh, the second way is what I'm about to do now, which is a drag and drop. So I have a copy of an invoice saved on a different machine, a different screen, sorry, and simply drag and drop and upload. Now it will take about two to five seconds per invoice. Um, so whether you do one at a time or hundreds at a time, it doesn't matter. Um, it just might take slightly longer if you're doing more at once. Um, and the third way is this upload files button, this green button on the top right hand corner. So you can see that we support a number of different file formats. Um, and simply selecting the file location from within your computer and uploading it that way. So once the invoices have been loaded up into this screen, they will all appear in the status of draft. So once it's in the status of draft, that tells the accounts clerk that there is something there um, awaiting attention. There'll also be a little red dot that appears on the top left hand corner. So if I click, I can see my two invoices there, one for Bunnings Trade and one for a different company that we just dragged and dropped together. In that two to five seconds that it takes for the invoice to load, um, it's basically the OCR technology is extracting all the key information from the invoice to um, omit that manual data entry. So as I clicked into this invoice, a copy of the invoice has appeared on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna take us through the user interface um, towards the middle and right-hand side of your screen. Um, it's very much a plug and play system. So I'll go through one tile at a time. So on the top we have the tax invoice details. So this is where the OCR extraction is extracted all the key information from the invoice um, and put it into the, the center of our screen. So invoice number here, if I click on invoice number, you can see a red box appear on the left hand side uh, and that's telling us where on the invoice that particular data point has come from. We simply go and check as the accounts clerk, we simply go and check all the data points. So invoice date, you can see where that's being picked up from. Um, due date, you can see um, this is either configured to be from your supplier master data in terms of the terms um, or what's on the invoice, depending on what your preference is. Um, but basically the role of the accounts clerk is to overlook this data now and make sure that the OCR technology has picked it up from the right location. First time round, you can probably expect about an 85% accuracy. Um, it is enterprise enterprise grade OCR. Um, so as long as it's uh, you can read it, if it's handwritten or whatever it might be, um, our technology can certainly pick it up also. Uh, there's a machine learning element in built as well, which basically means that if it's got anything wrong, there will simply be a drop down list of all the various data points within the invoice that the system thinks that, that information could come from. Now, in the event that the information has picked up incorrectly that first time round, you simply train the system as to where to pick it up from next time. So that the second time round onwards, you're getting to 99 plus percent accuracy. Um, so the role of the accounts clerk is to eyeball that information and make sure it's all correct. Then we have a tile called ERP supplier. Um, this is basically a mirror of your supplier master data within your ERP software. And on the right hand side, we have price. So we support a number of different currencies. Um, and you can see here, that red box has appeared again on the left hand side, telling you where that it's picked up that pricing information from. So no manual input, um, that data has all been extracted um, off that um, original supplier invoice. 
If we keep going down towards the screen, the middle part of the screen is now referring to our goods section. So this particular invoice you can see has a number of different line items. Um, if you had the requirement to extract all line items for different purposes, say for example, you needed to code them to a different GL or sub account, um, say you wanted to cost code them to a different project or tax bracket, you would simply come and select the add from invoice button here. And by doing that, it has stripped all the line items from the invoice into the middle of our screen. This is now allowing me full flexibility to change the tax category, the branch, for example, um, the GL code sub account and project code, like I mentioned. If you have the requirement within a line item to break it down even further, so you can see this first line item is for $208.56. If I simply hit this split button, anything up to eight ways, but I'll select two for the sake of the example, it has taken that first line item and split it two ways. So this is um, if you have even more complex requirements um, where you need to split line items also. There might be the instance where you don't actually want to extract the line items. However, you do want to take the overall cost of the invoice and split that to different project codes or cost centres. In that example, you would simply hit the split invoice button and it will ask you here, how many times would you like to split the invoice? Um, again, you can do it as many times as you like, but I'll leave it at two. And it's taken the overall cost of 250.38 and split it two ways. Um, it doesn't have to be a 50-50 split. As long as it equals 100, that's completely fine. That's yet another way that you could split the, the overall cost of this invoice. Or of course, also the header level extraction where there is no need to do any of those things, in which case we are done at this point um, and simply need to come and select the GL code and the sub account that this invoice relates to um, and then simply come and select an approver. For this particular example, there's no purchase order. Um, I'll show you that in the next example. Um, so for this one, I'm essentially at the point now where I can come and select the approver and submit this invoice off. So I'm going to leave the approver as myself, but this is the section where you would come and select the right person within your business. Um, and I'll leave it as me so I can also show you the role of the approver. Before we submit this invoice, I will just show you that in the event there are corresponding documentation that is um, affiliated with this invoice. So for example, um, email trails or delivery dockets or whatever it might be that corresponds to this invoice, um, we have an upload and view files option here, where we're simply, again, supporting a number of different formats and simply select the location of the files that we'd like to attach. So this is uh, this becomes really awesome and in terms of an, um, a central data point to keep all the relevant information. So for this um, invoice, I'm going to go ahead and submit. We now have another one left in draft, the one that we dragged and dropped together. The difference between the one that we just did and this one is that this one has a little black icon next to it, um, indicating that there have been receipted goods for this particular invoice. So this is related to a purchase order. And if I click on the invoice, exactly the same setup as before, where the copy of the invoice appears on the left hand side. Here, the role of the accounts clerk is to go through and make sure that that data has come from the correct location. So you can see the red box again, where the invoice number has been picked up from. You can see the invoice date, the due date. And as long as you're comfortable with, with where everything is, then um, there's no need to make any amendments. And don't forget that machine learning element so that you can make adjustments for next time if required. Again, supplier master data is mirrored. Um, and again, the pricing information has been picked up from that correct location within the invoice. Now for this one, <clears throat> there is a little three in a circle here indicating that there have been three um, fulfilled items against this invoice. So if I click on that, it will bring up all of those three with, with its corresponding purchase order number, receipt number, receipt line, for example. So this is an excellent way for that two or three way matching. If you do receipt goods, then three way match between the original purchase order, the supplier invoice and those receipted goods. Um, but of course, as you do this, you might have the instance where um, they're not received in a linear fashion, or maybe you have multiple purchase orders that apply to the same invoice. So I'll show you how to manage those now. But before I do, you can see that this also pointed out any PPV that might be applicable. So in the event that this invoice wasn't for 2,200, but rather 2,300, you can see that it's picked up a variance of $100. Um, we can absolutely configure to have acceptable variances, whether it be by dollar or whether it be by percentage, um, to make sure if it's within that acceptable threshold, um, we can still go ahead and perform that three-way match. Uh, and more often than not, those invoices go to an auto-approved um, status, which means that there's no need for um, any secondary or, or third-level approvals thereafter. Now, in the event that you have multiple purchase orders or maybe you haven't received all items at once, 
Um, there's a button here called Open PO slash Receipt Selector, and this is a live lookup into the purchase order module within your ERP. So this gives me the flexibility now to say, for example, this one and this one have been fulfilled, but not this one, and simply add those two items, and the rest of this purchase order would be on hold until the final good has been receipted. Once that final good has been receipted, then the, the three-way match is complete and the purchase order is closed within your ERP. You might also have the scenario where you have multiple purchase orders. So if I just broaden this search, this has brought up now two purchase order numbers, 636 and 638. Um, this will show us all purchase open purchase orders that are affiliated with this particular supplier. So this now gives me again the flexibility to come and select off a number of different purchase orders. So for a PO example, um, the PPV has been flagged, um, the, the GL and sub account have been um, embedded in because that's done at the purchase order level. Uh, and again, showing the multiple ways you can um, receipt, you can add the receipted items, whether it be for multiple purchase orders or not all line items together. But again, for this example, um, we go ahead and hit submit. So once um, the role of the accounts clerk um, has been complete and basically rinse and repeat the process that we just went through for every um, invoice that's in this in tray, um, now it becomes uh, in the hands of the role of the approver. So the approver within Trailed has access to one tab and that one tab is called My Invoices. So if I click on My Invoices, you can see the, th the two that we just did together and one that I loaded earlier for a supplier called Kingfisher and the reason I've loaded that one is so I can start talking a little bit about the risk flags and the risk warnings. So Shadi mentioned at the beginning that um, it's we're getting more and more creative or fraudsters are getting more and more creative um, around how they are going about trying to ensure that the payments are made to what feels and seems like a really familiar supplier, but actually it's not. And so one of our standout features when it comes to trailed is our fraud protection. So I'm going to show you how, how it works and what type of things it's looking out for. So if I go to the Bunnings invoice, for example, this is coming up again. So, so the approver experience is very similar from the look and feel. You can see a copy of the invoice on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you can see our risk flag along with the approve reject buttons. You can also see what GL code and sub account this has been um, coded to. So what are the risk scores looking at? It's looking at a whole host of things. So first and foremost, looking at duplicate invoices. Um, it's also looking at business number registration for the relevant country that this business operates in. So ABN number if you're in Australia. Um, it's looking for is this supplier or is this company a part of any band lists around the globe? It's looking for the IP address of where this invoice stemmed from. So if you're used to dealing with Bunnings trade out of WA, but this particular invoice is stemmed from somewhere offshore, it's a telltale sign and it'll flag it as a high risk invoice. Um, it's looking at the PDF metada metadata. So the logo, for example, that might look the same to you or I, but there's some slight difference in the way the logo is presenting itself. Um, and also any PDF editing tools. So has this invoice been through any editing tools before it's hit your inbox? Also looking for BSB and account number details, not only to see is it a match for what's in your ERP master data, but also does anybody else um, across the economy pay that supply using those same BSB and account number? So you're leveraging the power of the platform, not just with your interactions with Bunnings, but worldwide global interactions with Bunnings. So in the event that Bunnings or some a, a supplier that you're familiar with has emailed you and said, oh, hey, I'm just letting you know we've updated our payment details, when you go and update those in your ERP, it might show that it's a match for what's in your ERP, but it'll also say that, hey, nobody else is paying Bunnings using that BSB and account number. So that's a really good way to understand what your interactions are like compared to everybody else's interactions. And that would flag as a high risk invoice to just let you know that this requires a little bit more attention before it makes it anywhere near your ERP for payment. For this particular invoice, it's come up as low risk, so it's a match, um, not only with my ERP master data, but it's a match for what you'd expect to see anybody pay Bunnings using. Um, and for this one, I'm really happy to go ahead and hit approve. Before I hit approve, I will show you that it's device agnostic. Um, so if I'm on my mobile phone, the, um, the interface is very similar where you have the risk profile up here. Um, you have all the details in terms of the GL code, the sub account, the approve and reject buttons, um, along with a copy of the invoice towards the bottom of your screen. So the experience from the mobile phone, if you're approving on the go, um, is also very user friendly. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and hit approve. 
<clears throat> All right, this has dropped in our high risk invoice now, the next one in the queue. So assume for this example that Kingfisher is a known supplier of yours and assume that you deal with Kingfisher all the time. So at the point in which you've received an invoice from them, there's nothing really untoward that stands out about that. What does stand out about this one is, first of all, that the high risk flag has presented itself and also why that risk has presented itself. And it's for three main reasons which are listed here. So first and foremost, we couldn't find payment information on this invoice that matches what's in your ERP system. What's in your ERP system is here on the screen also, and it's basically telling you it's not a match. Secondly, the payment details have changed since you last paid Kingfisher, and also nobody else that's paying Kingfisher is has been asked to pay them using the BSB account number that you have been asked to pay them using. So that's a really, um, really quick and efficient way as an approver to understand where to put your attention and which invoices you can go ahead and approve pretty quickly. The third reason this is coming up as a high risk invoice, and this is more an amber flag as opposed to a red flag, is that the value exceeds the previous ERP supplier maximum. So over here, we have a little graph showing us our interactions with this supplier over the last 12 months. And usually the supplier average is 1345. And on this particular occasion, it's 2942. So more than double your standard. So for all these reasons, um, this is coming up as a high risk invoice um, and a great example of one that you wouldn't whiz through and approve, but rather sit on a little while and uh, do some due diligence before this has been approved. So in terms of communicating about this invoice now, um, it's always best to use the trailed encrypted platform as opposed to emails. Um, there's every chance that either your supplier's emails or your emails have been compromised. Um, and so using the trailed encrypted platform um, is a really secure way to communicate about this invoice now. So if I go ahead and use the at symbol and tag Mark and say, please call supplier to verify bank details. Something looks off. And simply go ahead and send that. That will date and time stamp that interaction with Mark. Mark will get now an email notifying him that there is something that requires his attention within the triode system. Um, and also this little notification toolbar on the left hand side, sorry, top right hand side, um, will get a little one next to it showing the notification is, is there. So this is a great example of one now that I would go ahead and reject. Dropping down the next one in our queue that we did together, so medium risk. And why is it coming up as medium risk? Because I didn't link the purchase order to this particular invoice. So again, a great example of one that I could either link myself or at the accounts clerk and let him or her know to link the purchase order to this invoice before I approve this invoice. Now, don't keep in mind that the, normally when there's a three-way match, the purchase order matches the supplier invoice and that also matches the, um, the receipted items, that, that will go through an auto approve anyway. So there'll be no need for any approval process once the two or three-way three -way match have been successful. So there'd be no need to do that. So the role of the approver is simply, I'll just say here, please link PO, reject. So the role of the approver now is complete. I can see two here in my rejected column. Uh, one's gone to the accounts clerk to link the purchase order, or I could have done that as the approver. And the other one is one that we need to spend a bit of time on with Kingfisher to say, uh, to make sure we're paying the correct details because nobody else is paying Kingfisher using those details. So the role of the approver now is also complete. In terms of um, now, the stage that we're up to is that before this has got anywhere near your ERP, um, anything that needed to be picked up can be picked up. And now we're at the point where we need to export the data into our ERP. Before I show you how to do that, I'm just going to talk uh, really quickly to the supplier tab and what, um, what the supplier tab is all about. So the supplier tab is a mirror of all of your supplier master data. So here will be a list of all the um, suppliers that you have within your ERP. And this is where we, put, we um, show the outcome of our checks and measures that we perform against each and every one of your supplier. So all those checks that I was talking to you about earlier, if they do pass the checks and measures, you'll get the green tick to show that it's been verified by trailed. In the event that we can't verify that supplier, um, there's probably really good reason as to why that hasn't been able to take place. Um, however, you have the option to come and self-verify. So trial would never stop you from making a payment. Um, it's simply a really powerful decision-making tool to give um, you some idea as to what, uh, what type of payment you're about to make. But you're absolutely um, able to come and self-verify if you're really confident that, um, that you've been able to do the, the relevant checks and measures with the supplier. If I come into the All Invoices section, 
There's a number of different um, filters here, and now I'm most interested in the approved filter. The approved filter is showing me all the invoices that have now um, completed the end-to-end -end cycle in terms of that OCR technology extracting the information from the accounts clerk perspective and the approver having approved the invoice also. So these are now ready to be exported into our ERP. The way to do that is either to select them all by selecting the top one or select them individually and simply hit this button called export selected. Once you hit the export selected button, now I know there's a number of different ERPs um, that are being used, but for this example, I'm going to show you within MYAB Advanced where it lands. So in the accounts payable section under bills and adjustments, that is where the invoices land. So you can see all the standard fields that you would expect to see within the bills and adjustments section. Um, and there are also two trailed custom fields as well. Those two fields are risk score over here and trailed approver name over here. So in the event um, you have a high risk or a medium risk invoice, so for example, if we have a look at this one uh, for Stone and Drums Proprietary Limited, you can see that it's a high risk invoice as per the trailed risk score, but you can also see that Julia within your organisation has still approved that invoice. So this is a, a great way um, if you're the person responsible for releasing funds, um, it's a really great way to have a look and, and see what um, payments are about to be made and what the corresponding risk scores are. Like I mentioned before, um, if a three-way match has been completed, the purchase order would also be closed off within your ERP. Now, before payment is made, so this is the point now where your ABA file would be created within your ERP, what Trailwood actually does is it pops a copy of that ABA file back in the payment section of Trailwood. If I go into the payment section of Trailwood, there's a couple of ABA files that we've got there as a sample. The reason it does that, this is your final check and measure for the person responsible for releasing the payment. It's telling you the payment value, but also the warnings value that exists within this ABA file. So if I click on that ABA file, the list of all your suppliers that you're about to pay, um, that's verified by trailed tick or lack of, um, and it's also got, if everything's been done correctly up until this point, it should actually just look like this, which is a string of green ticks, because any problematic invoices would have been taken care of well before this stage because now the ABA file has been created, we're essentially looking to release the funds. So it should look like a green, um, a, a row of green ticks. In the event something has been missed, it'll pop it to the top of your screen. So if we have a look at this example for stone and drums, the reason um, these are showing at the top of our screen is because no prior payments have been made to this supplier and that could be okay and that's why it's amber and not red. It's also showing us that the ABN number for this company is not active. They're not registered for GST. For this one, the bank details may have been manipulated. For this one, the bank details have changed. And these are a whole host of measures that um, are appearing at the top of your screen just to make sure that before payments released, you're really comfortable with what you're about to pay. Now, all of these are looking at external fraud protection, except this one. This one's a T with a cross. Um, and basically, the, um, the message that corresponds with this um, icon is that the payment value exceeds the exported invoices in trailed. What that basically means is that Stone and Drums did go through a trailed approval process within your organisation. However, this amount for $601.95, that wasn't the amount that was approved. There was an amount less than that that was actually approved. Only two ways that that could have happened. Um, way number one is that somebody's entered an invoice um, for Stone and Drums directly into your ERP and it hasn't gone through the trailed system, um, or it was entered through the trailed system, but in your ERP, someone's tacked on an extra couple of hundred dollars um, to that invoice. So looking at both internal and external protection um, ways for your business. And from a user perspective, um, really, really simple. Um, it's unlimited users for a trailed subscription. Um, we can absolutely configure users to have access to um, everything or limited things. Um, maybe you have limited branches, you want them to have access to limited projects, for example. Um, and so from a user perspective, we can absolutely configure that um, when we do the onboarding. Um, and there are no limits to, to the amount of users that you can actually have. So in terms of the end-to-end -end trailed process, everything from the accounts clerk to the approval to getting it into your ERP solution, plus that end-to-end -end fraud protection, um, that essentially is the trailed end-to-end -end solution. Um, like I said, really deep integration with your ERP solution, um, just to make it a really seamless experience from a user, um, user experience perspective. 
Um, and with that said, Mark, I might uh, I might hand it over to you. I know we have some time for questions at the end, but uh, back over to you for the time being. Yeah. So just before we jump uh, to questions, uh, we just have one last slide to to show and share. Uh, so as you think through some of those questions, pop them in the chat, uh, and we can come to those in a second. Uh, course trail, we are an add-on solution. Um, we we'd be remiss of not mentioning that we're a Myob Advanced App of the Year uh, for last year, uh, and so it's been quite a popular uh, solution, if we do say so ourselves. But uh, some of the reasons for that um, it come down to some of these ROI uh, benefits that you're seeing on the screen. So it is an add-on. There is a commercial decision for you to think about for your business. Uh, but as you can see there, where the, that, the $27 is actually a number from the ATO, where they've worked out between $27 and $30 is actually what it costs a business um, to process a PDF invoice in their business when taking into account staff time and effort and that sort of thing. We've been able to model with Trail that down to uh, about $7. And if you do, say, have uh, a lot of invoices that are purchase orders and you like to use approval rules or um, there's you start to manage by exception um, by uh, only needing to look at the invoices in trail that um, have, have a variance or something like that, that can actually even get a, a bit lower than that. But for a very standard sort of business that we see, a very typical mid-market Australian business of around 300 invoices per month, it actually comes out to almost the, the the cost of an average annual Australian salary um, or just a fraction above in terms of the savings. So we tend to find that those businesses that really uh, love and uh, are ready to take on trail, that they can find a way that the, the savings are actually going to sort of pay for themselves. And even if they are saving time for people in their business, they can actually redeploy them onto far more value generating tasks rather than manual menial data entry tasks. And so we're certainly not about uh, removing anyone, but actually moving people onto the important stuff, potentially like looking at a potential fraudulent invoice that might've come through. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, some of those stats there, we, we can pause and go to questions. And of course, uh, um, yeah, well, Shadi, maybe I'll, I'll throw it to you and uh, see, see what's coming through. Thanks, Mark. And Shrada, great presentation. Um, so we do have a, a few questions uh, that's come through. Uh, two yeah. from one of our participants, Mark. Because so I'll jump in there on the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark, for the, for the questions. Uh, so in terms of limitations from mobile to web, uh, you can do everything that's entrailed uh, on a mobile device, tablet or smartphone. Uh, and that doesn't matter the type. It is a web app, so you don't actually need to install or have updates of apps, anything like that. Um, we do find, though, that the only real use case for, for the mobile is actually that approver's screen. Uh, so, yeah, as that comes through, that's the main reason. Most people we find um, the desktop view is better, especially when you've got sort of a table and you're looking at a number of fields um, across them, um, which does kind of lead into the next question where you asked about uh, different filters such as drafts, all invoices, um, and, and whether or not you can add filters. Look, uh, we've found that most of those filters do cover uh, what the different states that businesses would need. Uh, one of the key parts in that too is around who uploads it and whether you put it on hold and branches and divisions. So that tends to be uh, cover mostly what people need. If someone was looking to um, add a different filter versus on certain requirements, we could certainly look at that, possibly uh, custom based on those filters that are there. Um, and you know, as you can see, we don't want to put too much on that to make it too, to, to squeeze those tables too much. One of the other components though, is actually you saw that there's the search bar, the free text search. So searching for an invoice number or PO number or a description, et cetera. Often we find most people, there's a particular reason they're going in, there's a particular invoice or PO or something that they're looking for and the, or a particular supplier even. And actually the free text search is, is the more favored one rather than having multiple filters. Um, no, so the, the data load, we, we, we haven't seen any effect. Uh, and when you say the system, I'm going to take that to mean the system, um, or you can maybe clarify whether it's the trail system or whether you're talking about the ERP performance. Uh, but no, trail is cloud hosted um, on the, the Google Cloud platform. Uh, and so that you know affords us all the, the benefits that anyone would get from cloud. And so um, there's no sort of performance issues in terms of when loading the invoices in. As Sharada said, it does need to process them. So if you do take a batch of, I don't know, 50, 100 invoices, something like that, it might you know take a bit of time for them to all process through the system and, and do those different algorithmic checks. 
Um, but and but no, in terms of getting them far faster than certainly far faster than doing them manually. Um, and no, we, we pride ourselves on that being quite um, a lot of uptime and, and that efficient. Um, in terms of working with the ERP, of course, everything happening in trailed all happens in trailed in that encrypted platform before uh, we engage with the ERP. There's small calls back and forward. So if you do have create a new GL code uh, or a new project or a new user, anything like that, it is real time in terms of syncing that information across. But that's very minor in terms of those small data components coming to and from once you're already integrated. Um, so that's very minor. Uh, again, in the same way, if you were to export out, uh, say, a large volume, um, and there I'd probably say, you know, 100, 200 uh, or more. Uh, again, not necessarily a performance issue, but you might just want to give that a bit of time to process across and send it across over into the ERP um, as it goes. I've, I've got a, a few questions uh, as you guys were running through that presentation. Uh, something that normally comes up through uh, from our clients is uh, approval rules or, or hierarchies. They're, yeah. How does that work in trialed? Yeah, so we're able to configure, uh, there's kind of two parts to that. So one part is just having multiple levels of approval. Um, so first, second, third, fourth level of approval and having multiple people actually sign off a particular invoice. The second part, we call it a, a approval hierarchy or approval rules, whereby um, it's kind of an if this then that formula that, you know, if Bunnings invoice is less than $1,000, then just have it approved by Sharda. But if it is more than $1,000, have it approved by Sh uh, uh, Sharda and Shardy. Um, so there's a number of different configurations there from supplier, project, uh, GLs, um, sub accounts, um, there's going to be too many for me to remember them all, but a whole range of those different factors that you might want to, uh, might be a trigger for a certain approval rule. Uh, we can do those either just through to initial person or change it from, say, um, Sharda to Mark. Uh, and all of those can be configured as part of onboarding. We are in the process of building a UI where users can actually create and, and move their own approval rules. But um, at this stage where we've got it out and we'll, we'll keep working on that UI um, so, you know, we help you with that and onboarding as part of the customer success process. Yeah, lovely. Um, uh, how does fraud protection, how does a fraud protection feature work for international suppliers? Yeah, it's a great question. And so uh, it's, it's the, the verification is actually quite similar. You know, when we think about different things, those different factors that um, Shrada alluded to, she just mentioned sort of a few of those, but of course, international, you know, SWIFT code. Uh, and of course, one of the main things is other businesses paying uh, through the platform. Trailed is now seeing, you know, millions and millions of dollars being paid through the platform on a daily basis. And they, of course, are from local and an ever increasing amount of global suppliers. So that will only increase uh, at the moment. I'm obviously in, in Denver for obvious reasons, uh, but, you know, across South Africa, uh, other other some other UK, Germany, uh, Vanuatu, um, and even um, uh, some sites through Asia as well. We're actually increasing the, the users, of course, for them in terms of their suppliers, that's building, but definitely very robust for here in Australia. I guess one of the reasons why we did add that self-verification, this might be where you might say, it, say with an international supplier, if you do have a, a, a niche or obscure international supplier that might be harder for trails algorithmic process to to, to confirm, uh, that is why we have the self-verify where you can do those checks and balances just as our algorithmic process would and, and know that you've verified that. And then in time, you know, um, that they may well become trail verified as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose just digressing a little bit since, you know, yeah. you, you're in the US, what, what's been sort of the adoption or, or the eagerness to get onto sort of AP automations and fraud protections mm. uh, compared to us here in, in Australia? Yeah, I think so on the AP automation side of things that they seem to be a little bit ahead of the curve versus us down in Oz. Uh, there's there's a number of AP providers, AP automation, sorry, providers uh, over here. Uh, on the security side of things, we, we are finding that it's actually we're, we're in a fairly similar position. The the pain and the um, issue in the US is is far larger. Uh, the FBI actually reported 14 billion with a B um, in business email compromise and payment redirections. Mm. So it's far more significant over here. But 
in our discussions, not necessarily that businesses themselves are more aware that there is actually something that they can do and that's not just, you know, uh, cost of doing business, that there are solutions and ways to, to deal with it. So um, often when we show the security aspects, people love the fact that well, more, more security for, you know, um, is, is always appreciated. But actually being aware that there's a solution for that problem, um, that's globally, I think, where everyone's still coming to terms with how much of an effect it actually is uh, and that there is actually solutions like Trailed out there that can help mitigate those, those potential risks. Excellent. That's great. Um, how long does a typical implementation take? Yeah, depending on the ARP, the level of... Uh, uh, complexities or customizations that you might have um, with anywhere from a couple of days to, you know, okay. one, one to two weeks. Um, yeah, I won't put uh, our Janine and our customer success on the hook for too many uh, one to two day implementations, but certainly with systems that we've worked with a lot more like Myob Advanced and, and EXO. Uh, yeah, we, we're, we've um, we've got really proficient with getting them up to speed. And so look, call it in the middle, sort of a week to get up and running and then training it can be customised to uh, your business. So if you have a lot of people and a change management process, we can help with that. Also, it is fairly straightforward and a lot of approvers find it fairly intuitive. So often we just get the finance team up to speed and yeah. they teach everyone across their business. But as part of that process, we, we find out exactly what you need. If you do need approval rules, et cetera, uh, and we work through that. And yeah, I, I'd say sort of a week is, is probably a good average of uh, yeah. onboarding time. And that's what I like about your application. Like it's it's a it's a low entry point for such a significant um, enhancement or efficiency and cost. Like you imagine, like a full time mm. salary. Like and like I said at the beginning, it should be a thing of the past now where people are doing manual invoicing. It's such a waste of a resource. Mm. Like it's it's a no brainer. Like it shouldn't be part of the process. It's like okay, how do we automate? That should be the first thing. And now to add the fraud protection. It's just added that yeah. next la layer of, um, you know, valuability that the, the company gains out of that or the protection. So yeah. it's, it's yeah, whereas absolutely. an ERP system, right, takes what? You know, it could take four months, could take a year. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's laying that platform where your system sits on top and now it's just yeah. added that efficiency. Yeah, exactly. And look, there's things like the supply data because we want – the ERP to be the single source of truth that our API Connect actually leverages a lot of what all the heavy lifting that AlphaBiz and the guys have done in your ERP. And so, yeah, we absolutely piggyback off that, that a lot of the core data is in the ERP. That's a single source of truth. And then we're just making that AP um, sort of more efficient. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I see Adam's one there in terms of the security, um, helping with um, financial institute uh, risk assessments. Uh, it's a really great question, Adam. There's nothing... And we would love to say that um, it does impact or help with that in, in a particular way. There's some of the self-evident ways, but we don't have anything necessarily to say that, you know, it would um, uh, adjust or move that assessment. Um, yeah, people have brought it in to help with their auditing processes and provide, you know, uh, read-only audit um, access to, to those bills. And certainly having things like the audit trail of an invoice in trailed uh, can help you know, the auditors to do what they need to do in that process. Yeah, we don't have anything concrete on that at the moment that we can say, yeah, this is how much it helps with that. But certainly I think um, in our, some of our separate biz dev discussions, it's been, you know, there's the separate things discussing about how that might help, um, you know, firm up or, or guarantee on those risk assessment parts of things. So maybe uh, one that we come back for the next couple of webinars, maybe have something to share on that in, in the future. <laughs> That's um, is there a way to report back to the system if fraudulent invoice is not picked up within the app checks. Um, I'm going to take that as being the system being the ERP, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, I suppose when you set up this system, Mark, yeah, it's always going to go through trial, isn't it? All invoices, yeah. on, because I'm imagining some invoices may come in, well, let's just say, if they bypass trailed, um, yeah. because it came in the mail, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Crazy yeah. things happen. Yeah, so, yeah, brilliant. So that that T with a cross, if you saw that when Shard was showing the um, the ABA file, that is a flag that would, would show up uh, elsewhere in, in the approval workflow as well. But, yeah, if an invoice was to put be put directly into the ERP and not go through the trail process, 
then the, the calculation at that point of payment check, which show that D with a cross, which is saying that there's a dollar value here that hasn't been through the trial to approval mm -hmm. workflow. Excellent. Uh, and so that would be the flag that's um, reporting back and flagging that to, to the person that's about to make the payment. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right. Hopefully that answered that. For Mark at uh, trailsoftware.com. Schrader at trailsoftware.com and of course you've got your contacts at AlphaBiz so yeah. if you're wanting an individual uh, discussion more than happy just to answer questions we can still do a, a specific uh, demo run through and discuss your spe specific uh, instance and setup and, and where and how there might be benefits or gains um, but yeah so if anything hasn't been covered if you come up with something later please feel free to reach out um, we're more than eager to, to chat yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you very much. We've done well for time. You guys have done awesome in a way of presentation. I really appreciate the, the time that you guys have given us. Um, yeah, guys, like uh, Mark said, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us or the team at Trialed. And um, yeah, hope to ha happy to help. And guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having us. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.